Do you have a piano exam coming up soon? And if so, are you maybe a little freaked out with the sight reading test? Then watch this video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Manu from Piano Sight Reading, where I give sight reading tips to piano players. Now, normally I advise people to practice sight reading all year round so that by the time they get to their exam and they have a sight reading test, they don't freak out. But if you happen to be someone who doesn't practice sight reading all year round, then I can see why you might be a little bit anxious about the sight reading test. So in this video, I'm going to be using several excerpts from this book, which is a book with sight reading excerpts. And I'll be showing you what to do during your sight reading test so that you have higher chances of doing well. I've chosen three excerpts from grade four. That way it's not the easiest, but it's not the hardest. So hopefully it will be relevant to most people. The first one is number eight on page 22. Now, as you may already know, you only have 30 seconds to look at the excerpt. So this is what I would do if I only had 30 seconds. Immediately I notice we are in 3-4. So that means you'll be counting three beats in each bar. It has three sharps. Now you should know immediately what those are. Those are F, C and G. And if you have a quick glance at the piece, you'll notice there are accidentals. So that's usually a sign that the piece is in a minor key. And if you're familiar with your minor scales, so this would be F sharp minor. Then you have the raised sixth and the raised seventh notes, which we see here. We have the D sharp and the E sharp. So it's worth knowing your scales for this reason, because you see this in music. So if you can try to establish the key, but I wouldn't worry too much about it because you don't have a lot of time, but it's good to identify if you can. And next is to work out where to position your hands. So in this first phrase in the right hand, you see that the highest note is a C sharp. So you want to start in a way where you can reach that high note. So I would put my thumb on the F sharp and then just for the last note of the phrase where it goes down, that's when I would adjust my fingering. So I would probably go go to two and then thumb and then the second phrase it actually gives you a fingering which is two on G sharp and it's all within that same position now left hand look to see what the bottom note is so it would be C sharp and the top note is G sharp so this fits nicely within one position like that so if you can just think of the first few bars to establish a tempo and during a test you you want to go slower than indicated here it says dolce which doesn't really say much about the tempo so i would do a slightly slow tempo so you have enough time to work out the notes. I would probably go like this.
okay and one last thing I'll say about this one is that so you have the three shelves F C and G so it's always a good idea to know which notes in the piece are the shafts. So make sure that you know that that first note F is actually an F sharp. So if you can go through each part and just in your mind think, okay, first note is on the black key, third note is on the black key, etc. And try to imagine your fingers playing on those keys because then once you actually sight reads it will be easier to remember those sharps let's look at another one which is number nine now this one i've chosen this one because it's in a different time signature this is six eight so the way you want to count this is one two three four five six or one and uh, two and uh, and this one starts with an upbeat so whenever you have an upbeat just make sure that you count yourself in and you come in at the right time because otherwise it might confuse you where your first beat is so with this one it would start on the sixth beat of the bar so one two three four five that way you can start strongly um, again look at the key signature which is two sharps F and C and this one if you look at the, the arpeggio the first arpeggio this is a D major so you're in D major again same thing with the sharps go through the two parts separately just to imagine which keys you'll be pressing which notes correspond to black keys so you've got the f sharp there and then here you've got the f sharp here and then here you're going to do c sharp now in terms of hand position the left hand is pretty straightforward and then you go down one the right hand the A would be your top note in the first line so I would start with the pinky and then it actually gives you a fingering later on three on A um, yes yeah, so if you have fingering make sure you follow it because it, it helps you and lastly we'll look at one more which is the number 10 I've chosen this one because it has different note values and although it looks quite simple people often get tripped up with different note values going from a minim to quavers to semi quavers so if you have a piece like that make sure that you're aware of your beats that's the way you count so if it's 4-4 four, four, you would count 4 and you would be counting the crotchets so make sure that you stick to that same beat throughout and I would even go through the rhythm mentally and luckily this one repeats it's like two bars and then it repeats again the same rhythm so you can just go through the first two bars just to get the rhythm right so in your mind you can count and then just tap lightly on your lap on your lap the rhythm so be one two three four one, two, three, four. If I'm the examiner, I will pay attention to whether the person gets those semi-quavers quickly enough. Yeah, so that's what you want to work out during your 30 seconds. 
and this one you'll notice there are difference in dynamics going from F to P to F to P so try to take note of that and you just have the one sharp which is your F so again see which note it corresponds and what key it corresponds to so those were three examples of sight reading excerpts I would recommend getting the book so that you have an idea of the difficulty of each level but I would recommend also using other material because there aren't that many per grade and if you want to know more information on what the examiners are looking for how to prepare for the sight reading test then I would recommend watching this video that I made where I really go through everything you need to know about the sight reading test and remember that if you don't want to feel anxious every time you do a sight reading test then I really encourage you to make sight reading part of your practice routine after you've done your warm-up do five ten minutes of sight reading and you'll see that with time that fear that anxiety will wear off and you'll start to enjoy it and you'll improve so that next time you do have a sight reading test you won't have all of that anxiety okay i hope this was useful if you liked it then please share it with your fellow musicians thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video happy sight reading and good luck in your sight reading test